Hey, how you doing? We're going to do a little wrap up of today. We're going to talk about how what makes something linear versus what makes it not linear. Things that are linear equations in algebra 1, we're going to talk about how we can write equations to represent those linear functions versus something that is not linear. So the first example here I'm going to go through is talking about how is it that we are going to make something uh, to write a linear equation. So here we go. First things first, we talked about the other day was the fact that what makes something linear in the first place is the ratio of its rate of change. So when you take a look at this particular function, I must create a ratio, and a ratio is a fraction. And what I'm specifically looking for is that when I go from y to y, what is that change? So every time. And from x to x, what is that change? And then what I want to take is a ratio of the change of y divided by the change of x. And on each level, that ratio must be the same. If it is different, it is not linear. So let's talk about one that is linear and how we would come up with a function for this. So if we take a look at this, we're going to call it, in this case, delta y, because delta y is the symbol for change of y, and the delta x is the symbol for change of x. So here we go. If we take a look at this one, notice how it's the change. I'm not putting a plus 2 next to the 3. I'm talking about a change from 3 to 5 as being an addition of 2. From 5 to 7, it was an addition of 2. And from 7 to 9, it was an addition of 2. Then I take a look at the x side. So I take the x side and I go, ah, oh, it's an addition of 1. We have another addition of 1. And then I come down to here and I find I have another addition of 1. So what I need to check is, is this a linear function? So what I have here is I go to each level and I take this 2 and divide it by this one. Notice how I'm dividing by what's across from it. I am not taking two and I'm not dividing it by this one. It is directly what's across from it. So two divided by one, that ratio is two. Two divided by one, same thing. Two divided by one, same thing. So the important thing to notice is that all of these ratios are equivalent, which then means that we can create a linear function. So, the equation that's going to represent this linear function is represented by you taking your rate of change, and that always, always is the coefficient of x, which basically means the number that I am multiplying x by in my original function. So here we go. If I take a look at this, the rate, okay, over here is delta y divided by delta x, and in this case it is 2 divided by 1, which equals 2. So what that has now created is the fact that I have now got my rate of changes too. So I can begin to now use a system of guess and check to figure out what is the function that represents this particular set of data. So the way I do that is I start off with either saying f of x equals or y equals. So I'm going to use a y because I've got a y up here. So y is equivalent to, I take my rate of change, and I say that I'm multiplying that by an x value, which is my inputs from this list. So I now come over here and I begin to do a game of guess and check. I go to my list and pick one input. If I were to look at number 2 in particular, 2 says it wants to have an input of 2 with an output of 5. Well, if I come over here now and look at my equation that I've come up with at this point, I've got y equals 2x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and plug 2 in. So I say y is equal to 2 times 2. Again, because by this rate of change, my thing is constantly going to be multiplied by an increased increment of 2. So I get 2 times 2. Well, 2 times 2 is 4. My input originally was 5, so 4 isn't good enough. So what I need to do is I need to now do some sort of addition or subtraction to make this into a 5. And the way we simply turn 4 into 5 is what is the difference between 5 and 4? Well, if you take the larger minus the smaller, so if I took 5 and I subtracted 4, I would get 1. So lo and behold, the number that I need to add to 4 is positive 1. Now, when I take 4 plus 1, I've now added a new rule that when I multiply my input by 2, I am now saying let's add 1. So what I now need to do is take that adding 1 
and throw it back onto my equation. So there I now have it. So what I've got now with an input of 2, I've created an output of 5. Perfect. So what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to mentally check, does this work for all of them? So 2 times 1 is 2. Add 1 to it, it gets 3. Perfect. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1, 3. 3 times 2 is 6. Add 1 to it, 7. So perfect. I'm getting all of my outputs. So lo and behold, what I've created here is a function that says y equals 2x plus 1, and that is the function that represents this data. So thank you for tuning in, and next clip will be about uh, what makes something not a function, a linear function, sorry.